Hello, vetters. I've got a special episode for you today. I sat down with actor and comedian Michael Ian Black, and we went over consciousness, aliens, UFOs. He's very well read into the topic, and we were able to have a light-hearted, fun, entertaining, hilarious conversation about all of this. So I hope to do more episodes like this. So if you're new to the channel, y'all, and you like content like this, please hit that subscribe button. We'll put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Sometimes you get videos like this. And of course, vetters, please hit that like button. That really helps out the video. So thank y'all so much for the support there. And of course, comment down below. What do you think of our conversation? Michael Ian Black and I talking about UFOs, aliens, again, consciousness, uh, everything. Um, I absolutely loved this conversation. Quickly, before we jump in, I just want to say that I am going to be back to just sort of our regular videos, right, that I normally do. So these are just special treats, like the videos I released the last couple of days, the video I'm releasing today. I got another interview that's going to be coming out with Pavel, who's one of the contributors on The Big Thing. He's got his own channel going. We had a wonderful conversation about someone named Dr. Jacobo Greenberg. So Google that. Start looking that up. I've got a whole interview coming out about that. It's going to be awesome. So anyway, let's dive into this episode. Now, if you're wondering, who is Michael Ian Black? You shouldn't be, by the way, but if you are, here's a quick compilation of who he is and some of the things he's done. Let's jump in. Very funny comedian you know from everything from Wet Hot American Summer to Inside Amy Schumer. Please welcome back to the show, Michael Ian Black. <laughs> Michael Ian Black, everybody. And Michael Ian Black was actually on the show earlier this year, and we were talking because in McKinley. the... Uh, you guys, yeah, McKinley, you guys had a sex scene yeah. in the film. Yeah. Uh, uh, you'll often hear that sex scenes are choreographed. Did you guys... No, not this one. No, you guys just... <laughs> Michael Ian Black is one of our favorite guests. He's an actor, author, comedian, and a handsome son of a gun to boot. Oh. Let's just put him out there. Oh. Now he's Hi, about to talk to you about this before. Uh, you were in uh, uh, an incredible sketch comedy group called The State. Mm -hmm. uh, and you were, uh, give it up for The State. Thanks, guys. Hey, I know it's not cool to take care of the cheese, right? And then I say the most humiliating sentence I have ever said to another man. I say, where would you like me? The other big news on you, and tell me if this is true, because it's been alarming, that you, uh, you bought a hot tub. Hell yeah, I bought a hot tub. This is, uh, uh, uh Kaufman Astoria Studios here in Queens. Five, six, seven, eight. Zoot suit, zoot suit, Z-O-O-T-S-U-I-T. Read, please, silk lapel. Guns are blazing straight to hell. Um, thanks, Michael, for joining us, man. You're in, um, Savannah, right, in Georgia? I got, uh, family out there, actually. Beautiful part of the country. Yeah, gorgeous. Lovely little city. Are you out there because, like, all the movie studio, you're shooting a show or something? I know they do a lot of work out there. You just they live do, out there? but, yeah, I just moved here a few years ago. Just for fun. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. What made you pick Savannah? Uh, a, a number of things, but um, including the fact that it's very pretty. Our son was going to school here, still is, but he's about to finish. And real estate was cheaper than up north. I hear that, man. That's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's awesome. So you plan on stay? Is this going to be like long term for you here, you think? I don't know. Yeah. We'll be here for a few years at least, but beyond that, who's to say? Who knows? Yeah. Did you always move around growing up? Was that something are you sort of familiar with or were you you're not used to that? Uh, no, I mean, I I grew up in the same house for most of my childhood. So, yeah, I, I uh, didn't move around a lot, but uh, traveled a lot as a younger person. And sure. uh, so, yeah, I mean, moving around is not a big deal to me, but we were in the same house for 20 years before this, raising our family. So uh, it was, I guess, a bigger deal having just gone through that and then sure. coming down to Savannah. Yeah, right on. That's awesome. Well, I know a lot of people um, during the pandemic, I mean, I moved as well. I was living in Austin for almost a decade mm -hmm. and moved up uh, to North Texas during the pandemic as well. So I get it. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, look, man, th this is um, totally awesome to talk to you, man. I, I got to be honest. I've been a huge fan of yours for 
<laughs> a long time. I told a lot of my friends I was going to talk to you. They didn't believe me, even though yeah, I, t- I talked to people. Right? Yeah, they were like, no way, Patrick. There was no way you're, you're talking There's to There's no them. way you could book a, <laughs> at best, sea level comedian. There's just no way. <laughs> Turns out you can. You just have to ask. <laughs> you just have to ask. Oh, man. <laughs> it's not like I'm oh, doing Patrick, anything. Yeah. I love it. I love it. No, man. Um, you know, that's the funny thing when I started podcasting like five years and um, that's how it started. You just got to reach out. You just got to ask people. You just got to yeah. reach out, ask, see, see what they say. And um, yeah. So listen, my fans are really excited um, that you came on. I have a bunch of questions from them. So I really, I'll just, I read through all the questions they, they offered and most of them, I thought oh, this will get the conversation going for us kind of get mm-hmm. us into the topic and get us going. You get to answer some fan questions. You got a lot of fans uh, on the vet team here uh, that love you. So, Oh, good. Well, that's nice to hear. Well, let's just start with the most obvious one, I think, um, which would be how, how did you get, you know, interested in the subject, you know, your whole life? Was there a specific moment? You've had your own experience. I, I'm a hybrid. So for me, it, I just come by <laughs> naturally. I'm a, what do they call it? I'm a star seed. So for me, I was just sort of born into this. Uh, The answer is, you know, I don't know when I first became interested, but it's it's certainly been my whole life. As far back as I can remember, I've been interested in this topic. And then when I was 17, I did have a sighting, um, which I think is kind of notable for at least one reason it was a it it was a kind of -of run-of-the-mill sighting as far as these things go i was driving home from the movies during my senior year of high school with my girlfriend and best friend and as we were driving back sort of through a wooded uh country road country-ish um we saw uh I, i couldn't quite figure out what it was none of us could it sort of looked like a fireball i mean if you had said describe a fireball which i had never seen before i guess i would have said something like this um (laughs) it was just sort of just above the tree line maybe a little bit higher above the tree line uh probably at the altitude of a small plane because that's kind of what we thought it was it might have been a small plane on fire maybe it was crashing or something jesus (laughs) i mean i didn't know what else it could be so yeah. we, we, we wanted to kind of follow it, but we couldn't because we were just on a road in the woods. And so it it sort of traveled from my right to my left silently. There were no sounds and we couldn't follow it anymore. And so the next day I woke up, checked the newspaper to see, you know, had there been a crash there hadn't. Um, and that was that. But what makes so it's a kind of run of the mill sighting. However, what I th- what, what I think makes it notable is the fact that um, maybe two or three years ago, right after we moved to Savannah, I was telling my kids about this. And I said to them, uh, what I'll say to you, which is the odd thing about it is that none of us ever discussed it again. Like we we never said, hey, do you remember that crazy thing that happened to us two days ago? Well, I looked in the newspaper and there was no planes. I don't know what it was. We never discussed it again. And as I was talking to my daughter about it, I said, and I bet you, if I contact my ex-girlfriend, who I was still in sporadic contact with, she will not remember these events. I don't know why I thought that, but I was positive. So I texted her and I was like, I told her the whole thing. I'm like, do you remember this? She's like, I have no memory of this. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> um, and I'm not in touch with my other friend, so I don't, I don't know how to ask him. Um, but what it, so, that left me with sort of either two choices, either it happened and she doesn't remember or it didn't happen. And I created a false memory. Um, to my knowledge, that would be the only time in my life I've created a false memory. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that's all about. Um, I mean, I have some idea based on my readings and stuff. If in fact I did see something, it's possible that it didn't imprint on on her mind or maybe my friend's mind as well because they didn't have any sort of context for what they were seeing. That's possible. Sure. It's yeah. also possible I just made the whole thing up out of whole cloth and I just don't know. But to me, either explanation is interesting. Oh, for sure. Um, I don't know. The idea that 
your mind would just make that up sounds sounds weird crazy. right right but, yeah, but it's not as crazy weird. as as seeing you know a basic a, a fireball flying over the trees and I having mean, no idea point. what that is and and them not remembering right or at least your ex at least my right, ex texting her yeah and she her and the fact that i knew that she wouldn't remember that I is know, odd i don't know how i right? knew that but i knew it yeah <laughs> she's like what else do you know about me in um, fact the last time so we hadn't spoken until uh, uh, uh for a few years before that and then coincidentally i talked to her two nights ago and she brought it up again she was like i don't like she wanted to just sort of go over it because she's like i'm very open to this being a real thing but i don't have a memory of it and i'm trying to understand and i'm like i'm trying to understand too i have no idea why this happened or why why i would have invented this screen memory screen memory for what like or just like did i have a dream like i don't know and the fact that like i remember the two incidents i remember seeing the thing and i remember the next morning getting up and specifically checking the courier news which was our local yeah. paper to see and yeah. there was nothing there yeah i don't know that, have you ever seen or heard other stories that were like yep yeah, that's like mine and kind of related to it well i've certainly heard so you obviously know this and your listeners will know this, but I feel like it's far more common for people to have, like for multiple people who witness something, to have mismatched or slightly mismatched memories of it than for sure. them to agree on the events that uh, took place 100%. It seems like this is a fairly common phenomenon, not only the sort of um, remembering it differently, but also one party remembering and one party not remembering that also seems to be a i don't know if it's a common occurrence but at least a not unheard of a com a occurrence um yeah that's so a good it point. so it does sort of jibe with other things that i've read and i had never heard of the, the when when that happened i had never heard of the fireball type like that wasn't a thing in my mind i mean maybe i'd been exposed to it subconsciously but um it's not what That's I think. One. It's not what I yeah. think I would have chosen for myself if I was going to yeah. going to invent <laughs> a UFO. You know, just some like <laughs> shitty fireball. Like I can't. Like there's sure. no. I like I, I. There was no like. It didn't appear to be like a structured craft that I could see. You didn't see any metal or some nope. sort of reflective, a nope. light shining. Okay, yeah, that is interesting. No, I mean it's sort of a classic. You know, sort of fireball slash ball lightning slash plasma kind of sighting um but at the same time it didn't appear to me to be natural like it, it felt like it looked like it was moving in a controlled way totally um, but it didn't it, there was no erratic movements it was moving slowly kind of in a straight straight ish line um so yeah so that was my only that was my only sighting i mean look to be fair like I, I you know i've talked to ex-girlfriends from back in the day that and they don't even remember like you know making out with me you know and it's like so i could see them being like very disappointing yeah it's like wait really you don't i mean i remember girls like they just don't even remember dating me period well, maybe the entire three months yeah. is erased from their memory well that's that's what happens with trauma when you date you <laughs> that's what happens i need a t-shirt that says that <laughs> oh my god oh oh shit that's funny oh my god Yes, uh, but you're right about the memory thing. I mean, any event that takes place, right, immediately two people seeing it are going to describe it differently. Sports are a great example. It's televised live all over the world. Mm -hmm. You talk to one guy like, the Lakers killed it tonight. Another mm -hmm. guy like, they fucking suck, man. And they're watching the same game. Um, now, essentially, that maybe be a little bit different, but I think memory is like that, right? It's just our perception, what we take in, what we know, you know, from the knowledge from our past. Can we relate to it in some way? You know, maybe if you are interested in this topic, you look up, you see a fireball that's going to, you know, implant in your brain a little bit more because you're like cataloging that maybe just like looking out at the beach and like a, a crowded beach. And what do you notice versus what does another person notice? Right. Do you notice the the hot ladies over there walking the thing or the girl walking her dog or, you know, mm -hmm. sandcastle or I don't know. It could be some situation like that. Um, But that story is. That's fascinating because I've never had a, a, a sighting like that that I couldn't. I'm a little jealous, if I'm being honest, um, you know, that you've had this sighting. Well, what's what, uh, you know, I had the most gentle version of this, but um, 
what's unsettling about it is not knowing what's real, like not being able to trust your own memory. Like that's, sure. that's, yeah. that's an unsettling feeling to just kind of walk around with. So when I think about it, I, you know, it just feels unresolved. Um, yeah. And that's kind of, that's just kind of tough to sit with. Um, but if she, said, as I said, you, as I said, it's said, the yeah. gentle, if she had, if she had remembered, that would have been that would great. Change it, right. Yeah, yeah. That would have been like amazing confirmation. Sure. Um, I think it's more interesting that she said she didn't. It's fair of her, right? That's like honest, authentic, right? It makes you yeah. Feel and then two years, and then that. And then I talked to her two years later, and she's like, "And I've still been thinking about this, and I, I just don't remember, remember anything yeah. like that." Yeah, that's crazy. And it's and 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 before any of your uh, viewers or listeners go to the next part of this, there was no like missing time or anything like that. It was just this, at least that I recall, it happened, and my only memory. Well, I can't. I, this is stupid, but I can't say for sure there was no missing time. I just don't have the sense that there was. Like my my memories go, we saw the thing, somehow we all got home. The next morning I checked the paper. That's sort of the sequence of my memories. There's nothing else around it. There's nothing odd around it. Sure. No, that's, I mean, that's fascinating. What a, what a great way to start this off. Um, look, I got a question here from C Drake underscore GG. Okay, here we go. It says, first off, I named my daughter Stella. For obvious reasons secondly do you think looking into space is a distraction as it seems most of these anomalies are based in our oceans that's been a hot topic right now right usos i know i just read uh most of gallaudet's white paper on it is that how you pronounce it tim gallaudet uh tim well they he said gallaudet but i don't know you know i'm gallaudet. not french uh je ne sais pas parler français ah well, well. um do i think space is the place to look uh, I think it it is a place to look. I think our skies are a place to look, and I think our oceans are a place to look. And then, obviously, like deep space is a place to look too. Like it's all until not until. I mean, once we figure this, what once we figure out what this is, and I'm not confident we will anytime soon. Um, I feel like that's just going to give us more places to look. I don't think it's going to. Like, I think once we have a sense of what this is, I, I, my guess is it's not going to resolve anything. It's only going to sort of lead to more questions. Yeah. Well, that's oh, hit the nail on the head there, man. That's that's exactly it. Um, Heiser Soze says uh, he's one of my mods on the channel, by the way. Um, What's the most convincing incident sighting, whether historic or personal, that has made you a believer? Well, we've talked about your personal one, but are there any sort of historical events that just like yep damn this is pretty convincing <sighs> great question heiser it's a great question and i guess the answer is no what i think is most compelling to me is the totality of evidence you can look at any one of these incidents and be like okay here's a possible explanation here's a possible explanation and i think you have to I think you have to exhaust every possible explanation before you arrive at, okay, I guess it was a spaceship. Um, <laughs> like that, you don't want to jump there. And <laughs> I tend not to. So I think you could dismiss most, I shouldn't say dismiss. I think you can make an argument against most of the sightings, but like some of them are just tough. I mean, the Phoenix light sighting, I think is really tough to dismiss. Yeah. I think yeah. the Tic Tac is really tough to dismiss. Um, any of these incidents that the Pentagon is releasing and saying, we don't know what this is, I think, okay, you have to take that seriously because obviously they've got every kind of PhD scientist looking at this stuff. They've got radar operators, they've got uh metallurgists they've got optical experts they've got radar experts like they've got all the correct people to look at the data and if at the end of that they're saying we don't know what it is i think you have to take that seriously um yeah but there's a lot but, but i mean there's things like um uh uh fatima and lords that are these sightings of some something witnessed by thousands of people well, what was that? It's not a craft, but it's something. It's something communicating something to people. Well, what? What? 
what is that? Where does that come from? Like to me, in a sense, the nuts and bolts UFOs are the least yeah. interesting part of this entire conversation. Yeah. And I've even I've got I've even gotten to the point where disclosure is kind of an uninteresting part of the conversation for me. <laughs> like I don't well, care. Like if the government's hilarious. I mean, it's not that I don't care. I do care. I want the government. No, I want the, I, I want there mean. to be answers, but it's like I'm not relying I'm not waiting for them. I'm not relying on them. And in a way, like I feel like the public is the UFO public anyway has moved past it and the government is I think in a lot of ways going to end up playing catch up to what the, the 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 UFO community is sort of piecing together um there's just so much compelling information out there not only about the craft but all the associated phenomena that and I'm not saying it's all one thing I don't I don't know that it is um but the UFO part to me is is actually the least compelling part. Yeah, no, you make you make great arguments, man. I feel like I've had those a lot of those same things that you're talking about, those conversations very recently, um, in fact. So that's yeah, that's interesting to hear you say that, to be honest. I also you. feel like the government basically did disclose. Like as soon as that Schumer amendment came out, the language yeah. of the Schumer amendment to me is point. disclosure. It's a good because point. It's not like he just came up with that. It's not like he wasn't working with the White House on that. It's not like the most powerful uh, Democrat in Congress is just willy nilly talking about non human intelligence and like putting his reputation on the line. Like, what the hell is that other than disclosure? It seems yeah. to me that just the bill itself was disclosure. And so, whether it passed or not, not that it's irrelevant, but like the headline to me was the bill was the introduction of the bill itself. That to me was like really profound. And 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 it was a way of somebody, Schumer, the Biden administration, DOD, somebody saying, we're going public with this and we're doing it in a in a way that we we can without uh unclassifying anything or revealing anything, just the language itself is basically saying this is a real thing pay attention yeah well that you're not wrong man I, i've said that a lot where we can call some of this a win just that we're having these conversations right in congress there's hearings the bill you know like you said offering that bill into the ndaa i mean a lot of bills that pa get past the government i mean to be honest with you, i hate politics to be honest with you I, it drives me nuts so i just stay out of it but a lot of things take time you know first round second round right it takes a few years to get it going like every mm -hmm. major legislation that's been passed in i don't know the last hundred years or more right it, it was a battle it took many many years i mean just for women to vote look how long that took us i think to admit aliens like it's gonna be a minute you know uh potentially yeah, yeah. i mean look obviously with with um women getting the right to vote. Obviously, we made a mistake there, but I don't want to make the same yeah. mistake. A huge mistake. UAP. I agree. I get, yeah, <laughs> let them vote. Let these guys vote, right? Yeah, let them in. <laughs> That's funny. Are there other, um, you know, you're on a set, you're talking to, so, you know, just whatever in between, you know, takes or after, after the day or whatever. Do you run into a lot of, like, actors and stuff that also have these thoughts and kind of secretly talk about it? Um, well, I don't bring it up that much to people <laughs> because those people... guys, let me tell you about this country road. I was on I was 17. They're like, uh, Michael, <laughs> you're due on set. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm talking about aliens. Hold on. I got aliens, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, lately what's happening is as i've been sort of more public facing about my interest in this stuff people have been talking to me about it i rarely bring it up um oh well that's cool i would say the, like the creative community in general like of actors and writers and whoever are, are maybe they've got to be open to it right uh yeah i'm trying to think whether as a group just sort of on average, whether they're more open to it or not. I would say they probably are just because actors are just freaks and weirdos. Um, <laughs> so they're probably more open to it than the yeah. general population, but not that much more open to it. I mean, because it's when I talk to people to get movies made from, right? The X exactly. e studio, you know, more money. Um, but when I talk to feel, I feel like people in the general population, I feel like most people I talk to are open to it.
But yeah, it, it seems like it seems like the the American population at least has already sort of resolved this issue in their own minds. Most people believe in it. Most people yeah. believe in UFOs. They believe that we're not alone in the universe. Um, and I don't know whether a majority or not believe that we Earth has been visited or not, but it's not an insignificant number of people who believe it. So I used to be maybe more dismissive of the wisdom of crowds than I am now. Um, <laughs> you know what changed my mind yeah. about that? Was uh, actually COVID? watching... No, it's watching kidding. who wants to be a millionaire. Like they had that thing where you could, <laughs> really? where the audience would vote. Oh, yes. And it was kind of interesting. Yeah. Having watched that show many, many times, the audience almost always got it right. Um, I think there is something to be said for uh, collective wisdom, collective knowledge. If you want to take that to the collective unconscious, I think you can. And I think the fact, for example, that globally, I feel like although the the people participating in religion globally has decreased markedly over the decades, yeah. I think the number of people who believe in God or a higher power has remained consistent throughout the decades. So they're losing something about the religiosity of it, but they're keeping the sort of underlying their version of the truth about it. So I find that really interesting, too. Um, yeah, well, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, because uh, they're losing faith, faith in the institution, right. but not right the ideas behind not it. Not in Kinda the like idea our of... government, right? Yeah. Like we we don't trust necessarily our government or whatever, whoever you are, right? Everyone think for themselves, but we believe in a you know controlled society and rules and having right. But how well, some it's, of us do. how it's run? Some yeah. of us do, yes. <laughs> Trust me, I'm in Texas, man. Um, I get it. There's a lot of uh, <laughs> crazy people out here, man. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, that's no, but that's a good point. Um, you know, I think you made a good point about we don't need to wait for the government for disclosure. I mean, the fact that there's so many millions of people with stories like yourselves and even going further with stories, right? Like way, uh, way uh, further. Like, yeah, like way further. Yes. Um, so how do you take that away from right it's like how do you tell somebody hey this isn't real and they're like uh what about my experience or just the idea that okay yeah there's there's definitely life on other planets of course what are you crazy oh but maybe they've come here what are you fucking nuts there's no mm -hmm. way well which right. like it's not that's kind of a weird like why can't that bridge be connected you can believe so strongly that there's life out there but you immediately dismiss that they could have come here or are coming or whatever, however you want to put it. If I had to guess why those two thoughts can exist simultaneously in people's minds is because, yeah, mathematically you look at it and go, well, yes, of course, obviously there's life in the universe or life in our galaxy. Yeah. Um, and then you can, and the same math applies to, well, then, well, but how could they have gotten here? Like, why yeah. would they be here? And how did they get here? Like, you could look at it purely logically the way like a lot of, astronomers and cosmologists do like i mean i think this is neil degrasse tyson's whole argument he's like but but they, they couldn't get here and where are they and we would see them and there'd be more evidence etc 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 i think all that is valid absolutely valid and and a lot of people i think um you know kind of appeal to authority on this question and they go well the scientists are saying it's not here so i guess it's not here and it would be a shock to the system for them to sort of make that um, intellectual leap to saying, well, wait, maybe they are here and maybe there is evidence and maybe everything that I thought about my place in the universe is wrong and everything I thought about humanity is wrong. Like that's kind of tough to sort of make that, make that ontological leap. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong, right? Um, there's no, there's no direct evidence. Well, uh, you know, public depends who you available. talk to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Trust but, me. I mean, I there is a I lot. Mean, like, uh, it's it's just it's 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 the weirdest it's, you're right. topic. It's how you look for it, right? Like, depending mm -hmm. how deep can you go in the research? How many people are you talking to? Like, how down the rabbit hole? But I would also say there's a double edged sword to that. Mm -hmm. You go too far down now, everything becomes. You, you, people then don't want to dismiss anything, right? 
you know, essentially like, oh, that, that could be real. That could be real. And then it just gets so flooded and so diluted and kind of why I started this channel. It's like to help sort of vet? condense this down a little. Yeah, exactly. Vet it. Um, although that has backfired as well. I'm sure it has. Uh, you know, Patrick ain't <laughs> betting nothing. But best bet, Patrick. You know, you name you name the joke. It happened. Um, so yeah, but just asking questions, right? Trying to narrow this down to scope and you know what? You maybe can't. it's hard. It's almost I, impossible. I I have found it. I have found it impossible. And yeah. so I'm I'm sort of taking the approach of listening to everything and believing yeah. very little yeah you know or believing some sort of percentage of <laughs> i'll take from column a and i'll take a little bit from column yeah. b and just keep plugging uh, plunging forward it's it's it is such a it's such a i don't know what the word is expansive topic and as soon as you hit any one of these topics, if you're serious, if you're serious about it, and you really want to understand any one of these topics, and when I say these topics, I'm talking about anything kind of paranormal or sure. paraphysical or whatever. Um, as soon as you start looking at one of them, you end up looking at all of them. And almost by necessity, you have to open your mind, you just have to, or, 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 or else and the whole thing becomes a kind of hall of mirrors that you sort of have to navigate through. So you can either choose to go through the hall of mirrors, or you can say, you know what, I'm just not going to go into the fun house at all, because it's a pain in my ass. And I'm happy just to ride the rides and be in the carnival and make myself sick on cotton candy. <laughs> the hall of mirrors just seems like uh, a, a, a nasty use of my limited time here at the carnival. And it is, yeah. <laughs> it absolutely is like it's a pain in the ass. And it's and the reason people get obsessive about it is because it lends itself to obsessiveness. It's the kind of subject that, you know, Kelly Chase um, called her podcast, the UFO rabbit hole, or the UFO rabbit hole podcast for good reason. Like you yeah. start going down this thing, you don't come out. I mean, you, or, or, you know, you, you, you have to make sure that the ladder is right there. You have to exactly. make sure you don't stray yes. too far because <laughs> you will go insane. Yes. Truly like leaving uh, the Hansel and Gretel uh, crumbs behind you, right? So you can get out. Um, yeah, you yeah, have to. A hundred percent, man. I, I couldn't agree. It's like jumping without a parachute um, mm -hmm. into this topic. Don't do that. Um, yeah. But again, like you said, it lends itself to it. I could, I see how it happens to people. Um, I tend to, like none of my friends are really into this. None of my family. Um, so that helps me disconnect in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, I do this for a living. So that helps me disconnect too. I can on my off time disconnect. Whereas most people they work and then in their off time, they're diving right. into this stuff. And for me, it's the opposite. I'm, I don't want to hear anything about UFOs and stuff. But for a lot of times, if I'm off, I just want to, mm -hmm. you know, just whatever, just, just enjoy some other part of life. Um, look, I got, this is, a, this is an interesting question here. Um, Oh gosh, let me make sure I say this right. Quit staring at my handle. Oh, Okay. Have you ever tried the CE5 contact protocols? No, not yet. Um, I'm curious to, and, and, and honestly, the, well, there's a few reasons I haven't. The first is I don't know anybody who does it. I wouldn't know where to go or how to hook up. Second, I don't like being in groups with a bunch of like weirdos who are calling UFOs from the sky, even <laughs> though I would be one of those weirdos calling UFOs from the sky. Um, hey, what are you doing? Stop that. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> oh, ah, I get it. So it doesn't like scare you or intimidate scare me, no. you? No, no, no. And the other thing is, like, I just don't like being outside at night. Like, I just get cold. <laughs> I don't want to be cold. But I, I absolutely would do it. I would, I would absolutely be, be, be very curious to do it um, if I could find a group of people that I uh, had had some success with it and were interested and liked it, and I didn't think were just like um, sort of two out of their gourds for me. Like, I can go pretty far out of my gourd. But I, I need I need I need it to be tethered to reality. Also, um, if I could find that group, I would absolutely try it. I'd be I'd be fascinated to try it. That's interesting. Um, you know, I think Stephen what? Greer has given it a bad name, um, just because of you know his shenanigans with charging people and the flares and and whatever else. But it seems like there's plenty of other groups out there who have had success. Um, but People I do it for free. Um, that's what I've been told. Like there's online. Yeah, of course. 
videos you can watch and and do it yourself. I know some groups that meet every Saturday to kind of do it. I guess essentially, what, and whatever have they the had term success. Is. They say they do. Mm -hmm. You know, I I don't know. I personally, I personally don't want to try it. Just I I don't know what's out there. Like I don't know what the answer is. But if there is something like, it scares me to like want to like tempt it or interact. I don't know. It. Yeah, I don't know what these things are. Can we trust even what they're saying to me? Like I, I don't. What if they're, they're they're like the alien Donnie Brasco? Like they're they're like <laughs> ruin us somehow. Like I I don't. Can I trust them? <laughs> they're, you know, they're, under they're alien narcs. Yeah, they're, they're alien narcs. They're working man. for the I, feds, man. Are you wearing a wire, man? You're just like, <laughs> you know. Um, so I don't um, know. I will, that well, here's, here's what I think is interesting. I mean, the whole thing is interesting. The whole, like, the protocols, the idea that you could sort of interact in some capacity with something. I, I do think that's interesting. But the, but the thing that I take away from it, at least my takeaway as we speak, is there is something very powerful about intentionality um, with all this stuff. There is something, I think, profound and true about the idea that once you start looking at this stuff, it starts looking back. I do think that's true. Um, and the question is, why? What, what, how? What is that mechanism? What, what, what is receiving these intentions? How are we communicating them? Are we communicating? Is it is it self generated? Is it is it coming from a kind of, um, let's say you go out with a group of people and you try to summon something and then something shows up? Is it really there, or is it or is it a kind of group projection? And I don't know that anybody knows the answers to these questions, but I do think that there is something tangible and powerful about intentionality. I think it's 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 why um prayer apparently works to some degree above statistical chance it's it's why i think people um in perilous situations often have some kind of psi experience that helps them warns them something there there is something about th this idea of intentionality and um sort of uh vulnerability somebody being or 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 the thing that i've been thinking a lot about lately is people who hit you know quote unquote rock bottom with alcohol or drugs or whatever yeah. and they 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 feel they're at their lowest nothing else can be like they can't go any further down without dying basically and so they'll say they'll say like in desperation i turned to jesus and i said jesus help me and Jesus did, or God did, God showed up and helped me. Like I used to just sort of dismiss those stories. I don't anymore. I, I think, I, I think there's something real there, something tangible. And it has to do with this, with this idea of intentionality and also trauma. There's something about both of those that I think plays a part in this larger phenomenon. Yeah. Wow. No, you make some great points, man. I got to admit, you're like well versed on this, well rounded, you know, speaking about this. Um, oh, I told you I'm a star child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Star seed. You, got, you are a star seed. I knew it. I knew <laughs> you're narc. I knew well, it. What is a star I don't seed? Know. I, 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 you know, I, I don't know, uh, to be honest with you. There's um, like I, children of different alien types. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Like you're a plea, yeah. pleading, plea, plea, whatever those are. Yes, I've heard that. Reptilian. Pleiades. Pleiades. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. Pleiadian. Nordic. Um, th those are interesting. This is where it gets tough for me because I'm, I'm pretty new to this. It's like, mm -hmm. you, you know, you see the New York Times article come out and there's a program and you know a couple you know grainy black and white videos that that's kind of what got I'm like, oh shit, you know what the hell is this what's going on you start digging in oh there's a lot of fascinating stories and then bam you just hit this video of like yeah there's seven different species on earth and they're living mm -hmm. up, and you're just like what the <laughs> hell it's not like where but time right. travel like it just starts to go it goes you know are there any things like that in this where you're just like you know I, you seem pretty open, to be honest with you, about all of it. And I'm open, too. I don't want it to Here's come Here's what I'm that open way, to. But, you know. It's. I'm very open. 
to people's experiences. And I think most people are trying to communicate what they experience in good faith. Yes. Great call, man. That I'm very open to. Yeah, me too. But when somebody says, you know, I met a Venusian and the Venusian told me there's a cataclysm coming. I'm like, okay. Like, I don't know about the details um, of, of what you're experiencing, but I do think you're experiencing something. There's just too many people having these experiences, these anomalous experiences that are, that have so much overlap in terms of um, well, everything, uh, 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 the, the physical descriptions of what happens, um, the way they're communicated to and with, the idea of um, this thing occurring throughout life, the genetic component of it. Um, yeah. There's just too many sober people who have had these experiences that overlap for me to believe there's nothing happening there or that it's some sort of psychosis or delusion. And if it is, I want to know about that too. Like there's something unique happening in the human brain that we don't understand. It's, it, it, it's the same thing as my UFO experience. Either it's real and that's fascinating or it's not. And that's also fascinating. And I want to know, I want to know like what's going on. Yeah, that's that's how that's where I'm at, man. I, there's enough smoke and maybe a tip of a fire. Again, you've mm -hmm. had a personal experience that is anomalous, so that, that gives you an extra connection. But for those of us that haven't, that's what I'm hanging on to. It's like, oh, we, you know, people say this is all bullshit. This is stupid. Like, are you crazy? This is mm -hmm. this isn't bullshit. First of all, now what is it? I don't know, but it's definitely not bullshit. There's definitely so much proof. You have people in the government the military saying they're you know interacting with our training exercises on a weekly basis tons of pilots uh commercial private military right i mean again like you said millions of people experience what are we talking about um there, there's something going on exactly what that is is that's where i'm that's where the buck stops for me there is trying to define what that is just yet right uh, but, so yeah. so so i think we're sort of in a similar place like for me I don't need any more confirmation. I don't need any more videos. Like the videos are cool, whatever. I don't believe sure. any of them anymore because you can't because of yeah. CGI, yeah. Um, but they're cool. They're interesting. Obviously it's much more interesting when they have a, a provenance that you can look at. And, and it's even more interesting when there's, you know, multiple um, data points to, to confirm these things. But we've seen that even when that happens, these cases, you know, just sort of get brushed under the rug. Okay, fine. Like I, I'm past all that. Like I don't care. What I care about are the sort of next level down questions. Um, what does this mean? And when I say next level down, I mean, and then, you know, from that point, it just keeps going down, 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 down. Yeah. What does this mean for reality? What does this mean for consciousness? What does this mean about who we are and our history and our place in the universe? What does it mean? Um, uh, for our understanding of our own planet. Like there's just, there's just infinite questions around this thing that I just, I'm so sick of the, is it real or is it not question? Like to me, like, that's not a question anymore. When yeah. Barack Obama is on Stephen Colbert saying, yeah, we got these things flying around. We don't know what they are. Okay. Yeah. Case closed. Like, yeah. I believe that, uh, you know, like I believe that dude. <laughs> totally. hundred percent. Yeah. I as well as more. the thousands of other people who are saying the exact same thing. As well as David right. Grush, who is basically repeating the same claims that have been made for 50 years. Yeah. Now, why? Is it because there's something there or is it because there's something not there? Either way, it's interesting. Either way, exactly. it's a fascinating story. Either the government is like creating like some sort of weird fucking psyop to like a generations long psyop to perpetrate on the American people and the global community for, for purposes that are unclear and mm, would almost by definition be illegal and nefarious, or there's something going on. And I'm just yeah. of the mind that there's something going on. Yeah, no, you and a lot of people, like you said, um, no matter what the governments are saying, just the average person is like, yeah, let's look into this. What's going on. I think there's something, uh, seems mm -hmm. quite obvious to, um, to get to that point so you're right we, we should be moving past that and having these other conversations and to me those are the more fun conversations and deep sort of learning conversations to have you know how does this 
where do we fit in the universe? You know, all those questions you just asked, like that, that to me is where um, the conversation is. Well, have you heard that Nazca mummies? Oh, sorry. No, oh, no, yeah. go ahead. Oh, and to me, that's the compelling part of the conversation. As I said, like the physical stuff, the craft stuff is, is super cool. And if there's technology there that I could, you know, uh, that they could apply to universal rides and then I can go on and fly around, neat. <laughs> but like, but I don't care. Yeah, uh, kids, we're going mummies. to another dimension. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. This is awesome. <laughs> Hope they got vanilla ice cream. Um, um, yeah, yeah. The, the Nazca mummies thing to me is also fascinating because it seems like this story just won't go away. And I haven't seen yeah. anything that definitively debunks it. If anything, it seems like everything I'm seeing is saying there's something here. What is it? Is it a different hominid species? Yeah. Maybe. Um, but it it seems to me at least like the original theory of these are just weird animal bones that were cobbled together a thousand years ago for reasons we don't understand or maybe more recently i don't know but the bones themselves seem to be like a thousand years old um i haven't seen anything or anybody that definitively states that's the case it, it just seems like every time i see somebody looking at this stuff they're saying the opposite uh, so I don't know. What do you make of it? Yeah, I'm open to it like yourself. Um, I've actually spoken with um, the director that's doing the documentary on him, Michael Mazzola. Mm -hmm. um, did a Twitter space with him. We, we message privately about it. Um, yeah, I'm open to it, man. I'm, I'm open till I'm like you. I have. I haven't seen anything definitively to like dismiss it completely. And I'm I'm half Mexican. My mom's from Mexico City, so I grew up going to Mexico a lot. And I, I've heard of, to be fair to the whole situation, I have heard of things like this happening in the past where they take different mm -hmm. and, and construct other things and kind of fake it. They hoax it. Like, I have heard mm -hmm. of that in the past. I'm not saying that's what this is, but... But again, when, when scientists and doctors are looking at these specific ones... Mm -hmm. There has yet to be an absolute dismissal. People try to. People go, no, no, they dismiss it. And you go, okay, well, where's that link? Where's that? Where's that mm -hmm. link at? And they go, I, I don't remember. I, I saw it somewhere, and I can't find. You know. And you're like, okay, but you know, I'm not ready to just dismiss stuff again. We like to talk about esoteric ideas and all these stories. But finally, people bring us something tangible to look at and to study. I think we should take advantage of that. If anything, just as a show of how let's just pretend whether it's real or not it's like climate change you don't have to believe it or not we only have one earth so let's just for the for safe sake let's just really take care of this planet we're on you know whether you don't need to believe in it or not like it's all we got right why take the risk so same thing with these mummies let's regardless if we believe let's just show how we would investigate let's go deep let's let's really prove it let's you know get to the bottom of it i'm i'm in i'm open Mm -hmm. so um know. yeah that's where i am i mean i have no idea what what those things are if they're some sort of hoax if they're not a hoax um they're fascinating that's for fascinating sure. yeah fascinating they're, they're i mean fascinating. They, they, they have metal in them they have eggs in them it's like what? the eggs i was like what the hell what what is going on here what who's got it what and if you're gonna hoax something who was the guy sit going let's put eggs in their stomach <laughs> right like that'll <laughs> That'll, that'll do it. Fuck them up. Yeah, yeah and, it, and, it, up. and it does fuck me up. <laughs> yeah. um, it absolutely. It's just the does. last thing you would think to do is a hoax, right? Like put <laughs> eggs in it. Like I think I the last thing odd. you would do is the metal bar. That, that to too. me is what's crazy. On the neck you're talking about? On the yeah, neck? Like, there's one, there's one on the chest. I feel. Like, oh like yeah, you're right. Human. Well, there's two kinds of mummies. So okay, so that's interesting. You brought that up. So there's the mummies that came out like last September. Right. And they show the ones from the Mexico City Mexico. conference. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now there was a new one. So there's these two, three new bodies. They're they're more full size, mm. and, but they're scrunched together, kind of like I've seen that one. I saw that one yesterday. Style. Yeah, like like yeah. that, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. So and those are a little different, but the same. Like it's all kind of mm -hmm. connected. Um, but that one, these newer ones have this metal bar on the back. I know what you're talking about. They they do have there that, was a chest uh, one. Yeah, the chest. So to one. me, if like you were hoaxing it, you'd be like, "What? Like, why would you put metal on a thousand-year-old allegedly cadaver? Like, what's the point? You wouldn't. Yeah, no, I agree. Like this uh, finely shaped, yeah, metal. 
Like, why would you do that? It's got symbols on it. Um, I mean, yeah. maybe you would because you're trying to convince people it's an alien, so they'd have some sort. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It, I don't know. It I mean, is. I, 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 I guess, know? I guess, I sort of lean towards it's not real, and I will continue to lean that way until there's they something prove. more definitive to say yeah. that it is. Sure, of course. But like, unfortunately. Like I'm just such like I've gone far enough down the rabbit hole now that I can't dismiss anything just out of hand. You have to look at everything like yeah. that story that just came out in the Liberation Times about or I guess it wasn't originally in the Liberation Times it was in another an, an aviation publication about these these drones that are swarming over was it Langley Air Force Base. Um, like hundreds of these drones that have been swarming over over this base. And so the article's talking about it and talking about it and talking about it, but nowhere in the article does it say how they identified that they were drones and nowhere in, and, and they haven't taken any of them down. Like none of these drones have been captured or uh, at least as far as we know. Yeah. Or anything. So you look at that and you, and, and like, you know, a few years ago, I'd be like, oh, there's drones. <laughs> Somebody's flying drones over the air. <laughs> yeah. But now I'm like, well, wait a minute. Is is that what it is? Because that report is very similar to what we were hearing from the Nimitz. Like there were this, these dozens and dozens of these UAP just sort of flying around. Okay, well, what's what's happening? Like how are the, let's say they are drones. Who the hell has these drones that we can't shoot down or capture that are flying with impunity over our military installations? What is that? I agree. Uh, uh, like there's just so many like crazy shit like like that happening all over the world all the time and let's say you know and i'm not saying any of it is aliens but there are but it might be it absolutely it might, might be. be i know it's crazy to like <laughs> i don't think we can dismiss there. it yeah it's like but that's there i can't push that off the plate right um essentially yeah i mean these these nuclear incidents that happened those are actually really compelling to me the ones that happened sure. here and the ones that happened in, in the soviet union um yeah. that's really compelling to me the fact that it happened in both places freaked out both militaries no neither side knew what was happening or why that's really compelling to me. And they weren't talking to each other. It's not like the Soviets were talking to us about it. I think they both kept it under wraps for years. Yeah. What is that? I don't well, know. I know there was um, some documents and I'm sure, you know, one of the viewers will, will vet me on this, um, but there, there was definitely a document between Russians and Americans where they identified, Hey, we need to have a back channel to communicate and identify mm. UFOs, you know, so we don't just fire off at each other. If we see something, we don't assume, hey, it's the Americans or, hey, it's mm -hmm. the Russians. Um, so they were fully aware that there was things flying around that they didn't know what they were enough so that they needed to make an agreement and have some sort of open line of communication to not start, you know, World War Three. Um, again, I think there are a lot of details like hidden in plain sight that kind of disclose a lot of this for mm -hmm. us. Right. And we're kind of fighting over these other details, funding, how, how, what is their, you know, what is their approach? Right. There's so many different camps in the UFO community. When you come into it, you're like, wait, why doesn't this guy talk to this guy? And they think completely different. These guys are saying it's a threat. These other guys are saying there's nothing to worry about. Those are two, you know, diametrically yep. opposed views. Like the how thing do that's, we fascinating to me is that i mean certainly if you pay attention to twitter and twitter ufo and i do <laughs> yeah. um yeah, like so many people are so sure about this yeah and i have no idea totally why they're How sure are about they? anything exactly that's what that's what gets me how can you be so positive one way or the other mm -hmm. um and you 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 know, I look, I go, well, you'll have pretty much the same information they do. You pretty much mm -hmm. talking to the same whistleblowers. Mm -hmm. How is how are y'all coming at this so differently? Like what? I, I think we can get funding or research. We don't need to pick one. Of, you know, it's almost like I don't know. It just it's those are one of those things that smells a little fishy, um, but not from a like there's no thing. It's more like personal stuff, right? Probably mm -hmm. between these people rather than the phenomena itself. Yeah, and I don't understand all the infighting in the UFO community. I don't want to understand it. <laughs> I don't, don't want to know about it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It just seems absurd to me. But, you know, it's like that in it any is. community. It doesn't yeah. really matter. The UFO community, I don't think, is any shittier 
than is the community is the comedy co community you know like that that, that oddly, would be interesting oddly the comedy <laughs> community tends to be more well, catty? supportive no oh okay. more supportive yeah. than most other communities maybe because i everybody... actually believe that if i'm being fair i do believe that yeah i mean it might just be because everybody's broke and nobody's making any money i don't know <laughs> and you don't want to burn That's... any bridges in case yeah. one of your friends ends up on snl and you're like oh fuck i, <laughs> I need a coin to give me a job now <laughs> yeah yeah i'll just keep that up i hate that motherfucker but you know what hey man how's it going yeah awesome <laughs> Yeah, call hey, congrats week. on SNL, yeah. buddy. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's hilarious. Oh, I mean, I get that. Um, you know, I interviewed um, Stephen Tobolowsky a few times mm -hmm. um, on my other Is podcast. Is he a UFO guy? Oh, you're, you're the podcast. No, no, my other podcast. Um, I do Texas celebrities, so I interview people from Texas, you know, mm. whatever. And um, he told this great story the first time I spoke to him about um, he's from the Dallas area where I grew up as well. And he told a story about Stevie Ray Vaughan recording his very first track ever on guitar with in Steven Tobolowsky's high school band. Oh, wow. Right? It's this crazy story that he just like hopped out on me at the, you know, on the podcast. And do, do you have any like crazy stories like that? Like some sort of weird connection that's involving just, like, Stevie Ray Vaughan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and or Stephen Tobolowsky. Uh, no, just you know, some weird connection to some because everyone, you know, I was blown away. It's it's um, that video is bonkers on our YouTube channel. Um, I don't know, I don't know, some weird sort of. I mean, I fucked Bradley Cooper. Does that count? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that counts. <laughs> I say that counts. I actually saw a clip of Bradley Cooper saying, uh, who's your favorite kiss uh, on screen kiss? He's like, Michael Ian Black, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How great is that? Dave, let's just be glad he he remembers it. Not like old country road. Right? <laughs> this is uh, thank you, Bradley, for, for keeping that. Wow, that's funny, man. That that's hilarious. Um, any plans to do another? Um, I know y'all did a sequel like. I don't remember. Yeah, how we did long two sequels uh, for Netflix. Uh, but no, so the film that we're talking about is What Had America what? Summer. Yeah, and we sorry. did, yes, yes. And we did uh, two. So we did a movie in 2000. And then years later, we did a sequel, which was actually a prequel. So we were all like 10 or 15 years older playing the same age as we were when we <laughs> shot. The original film except exact <laughs> actually three months younger than we were <laughs> <laughs> who came up with that idea i love it I just, I, uh well the two guys uh, who are the writers and uh producers and directors are uh, michael showalter and david wayne so that was that was all them it, i thought it was pretty hilarious when they told me hilarious it. yeah that's uh, totally is. so any plan maybe for another one um i don't know so yeah, maybe in 10 years, we'll be 70, we'll be in our <laughs> 60s and 70s playing, uh, you know, maybe elementary school age children or something. <laughs> <laughs> I get flashbacks of Robin Williams, Jack, I just picture that, oh, yeah. or or Cocoon, but uh -huh. different, I don't know. Um, okay, that's interesting. That's very interesting. What, what's your, um, oh, let me, let me read the name here. Um, which by the way, there's a thousand questions I didn't ask. So I'm sorry, veterans. I, I got carried away and asked my own questions. Um, you know, what's it's your, your show. You're allowed to ask. Yeah, your own I know. I know. But, um, you know, they, they put out these, these great questions and I didn't get to them. like usual. I screwed it up, Michael. Um, sorry. Oh gosh. Sorry. Just, let's just go with sorry. Uh, what's your favorite alien related movie? um there's a bunch of them i like for different reasons i i uh i the the well so close encounters i think does a really good job of exploring the 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 consciousness side of it and the kind of woo woo side of it in a way that sort of makes sense you know you, you have these people who are for whatever reason receiving these messages to do this thing um 
And I think that's a kind of underexplored aspect of the phenomena is that some people feel them. And I don't mean like the, the, the sort of like um, gratuitous, like horror abduction stories, but some people feel like they have this sort of deep connection rooted in experience with something NHI and some of those um, messages end up bearing fruit in some way. I think that's really interesting. Um, recently, I feel like The Arrival did such a good job of not yeah. only being, it was, it's only a beautiful film, it's a philosophical film, but it also, I thought, did a really good job of presenting um, what I imagine trying to communicate with an NHI would be like. It's like, how do you, where, how do you find that middle ground? Where, where, where is our commonality? I, th I thought, I thought that was really, really well done. And I liked how alien they were, um, how exotic those creatures were, how unlike us they were. I really liked that. Yeah. They also like introduced the sort of time element, time space mm -hmm. element in a, in a, mm -hmm. in a fin phenomenal way. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. That, that's a, and, and speaking of, um, Denis Villeneuve has, you know, Dune 2 coming out. So it's kind of alien in some sense, right? Like he's really into this. Um, I like these great directors taking on these concepts and not making it so goofy, which which is fine. I like goofy too, like uh, Hitchhiker's Guide. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just genius. I mean, just like next level. Um, so I can appreciate, I guess, all the way across the board. Fire in the Sky is one of my favorites. Uh, movies. I know, I don't know I've seen it and that. I don't remember it. Yeah, I don't Fire know in the Sky about? Up, it's Travis Walton. Travis story. Walton, right? I did know that. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I remember thinking uh, when I was a kid. You know, I was you know teenager at the time when it came out. I was like, wait, is that that's the Terminator Two dude? What's he <laughs> doing? He's got a beard. Like he's a country guy. What the hell? <laughs> you didn't I, understand I, the concept of actors when you were growing correct. up. Correct, I didn't. I was like, <laughs> how is that? He's not a real robot from the future. I don't. Know. I'm confused, mom. Uh, yeah, I, I mean that's the truth. I just thought, wow, that guy. He's like Daniel Day Lewis in this shit, man. This guy is great. Uh, he doesn't get enough credit. Yeah, I love that movie. DB Sweetie. Yeah, I, I don't mm -hmm. know why I find that that movie um, just fascinating. That story. You know what? It's very similar. I mean, the second half of the story, but they're out on a country road. They're with their friends, right? Hanging out. And then all of a sudden they see this mm -hmm. thing and they can't explain it. Uh, that, you know, that's a good question. Would you would you Travis Walton the situation? Would you go out to Given a light? choice? Like, what's you know, what is that? You know what I mean? Does oh. that make sense? Like, would you approach uh, this thing? I wouldn't only because I've heard too many stories about radiation. Um, yeah. But like if if I could cocoon it and they were like, hey, come come hang out in the stars <laughs> with us. I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, cool. And yeah. even if I knew, even if I knew there was some chance that they would eat me, even if I knew that, <laughs> I'd, I'd be like, it might be worth it. <laughs> That's why I have this theory about like, if you had a psycho ex-girlfriend, it's like they 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 made you a hair doll. Hey, that's dedication. Like I'm that's I'm I'm getting attention like I've never I'm got. Like, I'm I'm flattered. Like I'm going until there's a knife to my throat and then then I'm stopping. But up until that point, yeah, you're that's good. Cool. Hang, hang outside my window and watch me for 12 hours. I don't mind. Go for it. I'm like, I'm cool. So you know, I could I could see that. Like, there's a small chance they'll eat me. Yeah, I'm in. This is mm -hmm. uh this could be fun. Who knows yeah. what I learned? Maybe I eat them. You mm -hmm. know, I, I turn it on them. I don't know. I, I guess that turns out ET tastes also, like chicken. Who would yeah. have thought? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man! I just got people got a lot of bad uh, thoughts right there. That's hilarious. Oddly, I never liked ET. Really? Never liked it. Interesting. Interesting. I could see that. Was it too? It's too hokey. Unrealistic. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Totally. I mean, honestly, if I tried to watch it now, uh, yeah. Um, I think when it came out, I, I was young enough to wear, yeah, phone home, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, I was in. Um, it, this is a good question. Um, I think. Um, oh gosh, you know, I can't read these names, y'all. So I apologize. It's just it's just consonants stuck together, y'all. That, mm -hmm. I can't read that. Uh, any guess on shapes of UFO, particularly the rumored Santa sling? Have you heard about this? 
Sounds no. like a tic tac with gears out of it. This is the most fascinating one to me. I'll tell you about it here in a second. Any thoughts on black cubes and clear spheres? That's the mm -hmm. uh, Ryan Graves told that one. Interesting, as mentioned since Roswell, one of the interviews and popped back up from Ryan Graves. So the Santa uh, sled one is um, there was a debrief article last year that came out where one of Leslie Kane, she's a journalist, right, for the New York Times, where she had a source. Uh, no, no, Michael Schellenberger. That's who it is, the journalist Michael Schellenberger, who he had a source that, you know, worked on this craft, whatever, touched it. And he talked about sort of a Huey helicopter, black egg shape, flat back, and then underneath had like a Santa sleigh sort of to it. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I always found that because when I first read that, I was like, well, I've never heard of that before or see, you know, nobody's mentioned that in the sighting or mm -hmm. or anything. So I don't know. Yeah, I, that's the first I'm hearing of it. Um, the It seems like there is a kind of endless combination of morphologies that these things show up as. I don't understand the reason for that. I don't know that they're, I don't, I don't think anybody understands the reason, at least that I'm aware of. Um, I just got done reading this book called A New Science of Heaven by Robert Temple. And I don't know how it relates to this or not, but it's, it's stuck with me. So it's a book about plasma and Robert Temple is a scientist and professor and writer um, who's particularly interested in these kinds of leading edge, cutting edge, whatever you want to call them, topics. So he wrote this book about plasma. And I, didn't, I didn't even really know what plasma was, I guess, and, and maybe, and I'm still not fully clear on how you define plasma, but basically it's ionized, it's ionized gas, but it's not gas. It's a different state of matter, um, more disparate. Uh, matter. Anyway, plasma apparently makes up 99.999% of the universe. And Temple's theory, backed by science, is that there are these structures called dusty uh, complex plasmas. Okay. Um, they appear in clouds, basically. We have two of them. They're called Kod uh, uh, Kodalewski clouds. I'm, I'm probably getting the name wrong in between the earth and the moon. And um, his theory is that these clouds can and do develop intelligence, that they're actually intelligent in organic matter. Oh, wow. Um, and he goes, and it, 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 he goes through all of his reasoning and all of the science it has to do with electromagnetic forces. It's a very long way of saying, I think it's possible that according to Temple's theory, maybe there are other theories like this out there, that there is some sort of ethereal force. And the reason I use the word ethereal is because I think it has the same root as the word ether. Um, which was the sort of theorized conducting substance that permeates yeah. the world. It was dismissed, but it's, it's possible that such a thing does exist and it's possible that it's plasma. And if that's the case and these sort of dusty complex plasma entities do have some sort of intelligence, it's possible that they're responsible for creating these morphologies, these shapes, these projections, these things that we're seeing for reasons which may be at this point in our in our existence kind of inexplicable. But it's also possible. Oh, so if what he's saying is true, and I, I don't know nearly enough to say whether it is or it isn't, yeah. if 99.9% .9 of the universe is made up of plasma, it then follows that we are also made of plasma. It then follows, um, and he talks at length about this, that we have plasma in us. It then follows that perhaps 
we actually are plasma and that it's the the meat suit is sort of being animated by the plasma and when we die for example the plasma separates from the meat suit and sort of returns to whatever you want to call it god source yeah. the kotaluski cloud or whatever um That's but it is it is if any of that is true and i'm not saying it is because i don't know it is possible that one aspect of ourselves the sort of larger let's call it plasma or the ethereal aspect of ourselves is creating um these other aspects say ufos or cryptids or whatever as a kind of uh educational tool as a way of pushing us forward on our own evolution and yeah. saying okay look look at look at this and see if you can uh, figure out the physics of how something like this would work yeah uh and if you can that's gonna that's gonna progress you as a as a species as an intelligence I don't know. That's 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 one theory, and it's as plausible as any other. Oh, 100 percent. That, that's the kind of stuff I love to talk about and and, mm -hmm. and discuss. If I'm being honest, it, it fascinates me. Um, the unknown and trying to fill that right. Well, just make up a puzzle piece. Like what fits here? What this would be cool, or or this, mm -hmm. or even backed up by data uh, to some extent, right? Um, I, I got a video, an interview I'm, I'm doing that I already did. That's coming out soon. Where. The person came on and talked about um, shout out to Pavel from um, Mexico. Um, he came on and talked about Jacobo Grimber. OK, he's a um, he's a doctor out of Mexico uh, who studied the phenomena and basically broke it down into like there's, you know, this is his theory. Right. Um, and and I'm, I'm probably going to screw this up, but like that we our consciousness creates the reality right around us. So it's broken up into what he called the lattice which is like matrix code of some sort is how it was put to me. And then, oh God, neutronal force or something like that. And that coming together with your consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, that that's what creates uh, everything around, um, you know, so I, I don't know. Have you ever heard of anything like that? Well, that, I mean, that sort of general theory comports with a lot of what I've been reading and studying that, um consciousness is primary and that everything else arises from that from as that, opposed yeah. to the other way around sure. um yeah to me that's a much more is that a, is that a chicken or a chicken in the egg conversation I, it, it, uh, I don't know that it is i mean it's i think it's easy to say it is um, because it's sort of impossible for you or I, lay people, to, or, or and probably neurologists at this point, to determine hey, the answer yourself, to Michael. it. Speak for yourself, Michael. Okay, speak for yourself. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. um, it, like, the question has to be, does and is, does consciousness arise from the brain, or in some respects, does the brain arise from consciousness? I guess I'm on the, I'm, I know I'm on the side of consciousness as primary um, because it resolves a lot of, I, I, it, it resolves a lot of, for me, unsettling questions about humanity um, clearly we have consciousness, but I've got my dog here and <laughs> he has consciousness. My, my dog's right here too. Yeah. 100%. There is some sort of animating spirit in this yeah. animal. Mm -hmm. And there is some sort of animating spirit, I think in most, if not all living things. And so how far, how far down does that go? Does it go to the cellular level? Does it go to the subatomic level? Um, it would be foolish, I think, to think that humans are somehow uniquely conscious. We may have an unusual degree of self-awareness, but consciousness and thumbs. and thumbs, which I feel great about. Yeah. <laughs> but consciousness seems to be pervasive. Yeah. Um, 
I don't think I don't think the universe makes sense if it isn't. Because then you've got, you know, if the age of the universe is 14 billion years, you've got 14 billion years of essentially nothing. Nothing. Nothing's odd, examining right? it. It seems weird to me that nothing I think you can make the argument that the universe cannot exist without consciousness in the same way that you could make the argument that a tree actually does not make a sound in the forest if nobody's around to hear it. I think you can make that same argument about the universe uh, in so, general, which leads, I think, inevitably a great point. to the sense that the universe, in some respect, in some aspect, must have consciousness. And if that's the case, then the universe itself is a living organism of which we are a part and if that's the case then i think you go well so is that the only living organism is the universe the only living organism are there other living organisms like the universe out there i don't know i mean i just think like i, I that this is what i mean like as soon as you start looking at a single ufo fuck now you now the universe <laughs> is conscious and you're like ah oh, man come on Totally. I mean, you know, you not, read an article in the New York Times, the next thing you know, you're meditating on an ashram and you're like, come <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah. This is not what I saw for myself. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, shit. That's so funny. and so true, though. I mean, it, it really is true. Um, yes, it's, it's, like, it's, a, it's a quick dive, uh, mm -hmm. you know, deep. Um, you My listen God. to one Blink 82, 182 song, next thing you know, <laughs> you're, you're wearing purple and killing yourself when the Hedley Bop Comet shows up. Like, what the hell? <laughs> All the small things is waiting. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. That is, oh, God. I mean, that just couldn't be more true. Um, God. It's I so mean, crazy. It, it really. Oh, Jesus. Um, so I yeah. understand why when people are like, when people are like, they just don't want to deal with this at all. They're like, yeah. Hey, yeah. I mean, you know, Lovely. it's the thing that like. They see the end just, of the road, right? Like, I don't want to end up and there. They immediately sense that this yeah. is not a road they want to go down. Because yeah. like, the, I have, the, you, you know, you said you're, the people in your life don't care about this. Nobody in my life cares about this shit. And it's always. Yeah. Like, it's so funny to me, like some people read that article in 2017 and they're like, well, I know what I'm doing with the rest of my life. And then other yeah. people, <laughs> but like, but like most people are like, I don't give a shit. But those of us who do are like, cannot fathom why nobody, why everybody else isn't like devoting all their time and energy to this. And that's the reason. The reason is because it doesn't, it's like, you know. How does it affect the price of a cup of coffee? It doesn't. Um, but I just affects... picture someone reading that newspaper and they're just like, I, I quit, Bill. Yep. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you and fuck your shit. I know, you know, I know what's going on now. Um, that's well, so funny, but so true, you... right? A lot of people did just, again, it's just how you take in a situation, mm -hmm. right? It's just what you think I about mean, I things, was how you take it, it in. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, I, I was too. And I don't even know why I'm fascinated with, I guess I'm just curious. I love the, like, I love futuristic movies and sci-fi and mm -hmm. I love tomorrow more than I love yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm one of those kind of guys. I'm just, whoa, I don't know. I got a thumbs up on my screen here. Um, that was pretty cool. Yeah. It's like that. Well, that's, you know, we got a huge CGI budget, uh, yeah. here at the vetted, uh, podcast yeah Michael's like, let me get just some. move gesture maybe, you're, maybe yeah. it's gestural and you just there's a new feature <laughs> that you didn't know about on zoom if you give the so, thumbs up <laughs> there must be uh so yeah i you know it is all fascinating i you know i would add one thing to what you said about consciousness and and that sort of thing it's like i don't know if we could ever know if it's exist without us or not but i think for me what i like to concentrate on is it just it adds meaning so if I'm there to see the tree fall, there's a meaning to it. Without it, there's no meaning. So it could exist and the sound could be there. It just no ears for it to go in or whatever process somewhere. But the meaning is is where it comes, right? Like mm -hmm. we're here. So we add meaning to the universe. Without mm -hmm. it, it's just like you said, nothing. 
Mm -hmm. But having a consciousness is what adds meaning to existence. Right. I don't know. I, don't I think know. that's right. But uh, but but I. I mean, my gut, and my gut is always wrong. My gut yeah. says <laughs> that fundamentally, like at its deepest, its 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 deepest level, it just seems to me that. The re that, like in in some very real sense, the universe may cease to exist if there's not a consciousness to observe it. Like in in some, I don't know how you could say anything exists without the observer. I mean, it's a very kind of relativistic way of looking at things, but I'm not sure that it's the wrong way to look at things either. Yeah. It, I, I guess I just have a hard time. The sort of the, the deep time of the universe, the deep, you know, billions upon billions of years, the thought that that is just existing in a kind of void in a kind of deadness maybe it's be and and you might be right it might just be that the nature of humanity is it has to give meaning it has to give context so maybe this is just a anthropomorphic way of looking at it but i don't know how else to look at it i can't get out of my own my own yeah. consciousness but sure. my but my own consciousness is telling me that consciousness is vast and pervasive i don't know i don't i what am i basing that on i don't know yeah i don't know <laughs> totally. nothing nothing yeah hey that's how you make good decisions in my yeah. opinion that, that's how well, i mean that's life. that's not really true i mean there are ways of so i'm 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 listening to a book by russell targ right now okay uh, yeah i don't even know i don't remember the name of it but he's talking about all these experiments that he conducted with Hal Putoff mm -hmm. at Stanford Research Institute and, and as well as experiments by other researchers studying psi phenomena. Yeah. So. Like Stargate and, and all of that. But like even things like uh, 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 telekinesis or clairvoyance yeah. or, you know, sure. clairsentience or whatever. Pat Price, Joe McConnell. All that stuff, right? all the yeah. remote viewing stuff. And it seems like the science is sort of saying that our consciousness in some respect extends beyond us and has the ability to connect to other consciousnesses, which means in some respect, consciousness must all be linked. If any of that stuff is true, if, if anybody can send a message telepathically to somebody else, and there seems to be evidence that that is possible in that that is possible in some in in some environments and to a certain degree that would indicate to me anyway that consciousness must be to use the quantum word entangled in some capacity and if it's entangled between two people almost by necessity it has to be entangled among more than that yeah um and it could be that certain people are more tightly entangled than others family members for example versus like me and you know some Vietnamese lady halfway around the world, but I don't doubt <laughs> yeah. that in some respect, I could in some respect be entangled with, with her as well. Sure. But all of that to say that, although I'm joking when I say like, I don't know why I think that, that's why I think that because there are, there, there are indications to suggest that consciousness, at least in some respect, extends beyond the mind and that we are entangled in consciousness with other people and i would argue with other creatures i mean my dog knows when i'm coming home you know weirdly um like we'll yeah park, like like he i know he can't see me if he's parked by the window and i'm half a block or or so i i actually way. know about this i mm -hmm. I, I i i read something one time now granted it's on the internet 
Mm -hmm. uh, but they said a dog, because uh, I got two dogs too. They they said a dog. So their sense of smell is really strong. So they they learn over time when you leave the house and you come back. If it's more or less the same time, they learn to judge how much of the smell is left in the house. And when it starts mm. to get low enough, they know, oh, he's coming home. Oh, interesting. I, when I heard, I was like, oh, okay. So they so they're smelling the atmosphere and going, okay, there's you know five percent of you know. Michael and that's when here. that person comes home. Yeah, and that's when they come home, and so that's how they determine it because it. Dissipates, I would buy I that if my schedule was more regular. Yeah, but it's not. My schedule is yeah. so irregular. No, fair. I mean, me too. I mean, uh, you're right. Um, as I say that, um, yeah, I don't know. Again, it was the internet, so uh, I mean, it you makes, know, makes perfect sense. I um, but I don't know. I, I look, I'm with you. I, my dogs look at me. They, they, I swear I, I you know, I'll just, you know, grab the little head on the couch and like some, something's, something's up. That. I mean, I can just mm -hmm. tell the way they respond their way. They're so, they're just so much more in tune with what's happening around them. I don't think mm -hmm. they have the same way to communicate as we do, but I think they're so in tune with what's happening around and very understanding of what to do, how to do it, you know, mm -hmm. kind of getting a sense of what needs to happen with you, just like instinctually. And there's just so much more to it than than we understand for sure. I, I couldn't I mean, I couldn't agree more on that. Yeah. And then and that is fascinating. Right. Having that this being right in front of you um, that they. Right. It's a non human intelligence. Yeah. It's got consciousness. It Correct. relates to you. You relate to it. And it, it has it has talents and abilities that you don't have. You have talents and abilities it doesn't have, and yet you create this really good symbiotic relationship. Totally. Um, Other ele elephants, right? Dolphins, yeah. um, birds that are so smart, uh, parrots. I mean, I could go on owls, monkeys, uh, gorillas, right? Like you, uh, it's, it just blows my mind. I mean, it's just like, there's something, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's something about consciousness and intelligence, at least on this planet, that is certainly pervasive. And yeah, I and you know nothing that we've learned so far in our history indicates that this planet is particularly special, other than the fact that it has life on it. But we just haven't found it out there yet. But we will. Yeah, and well, that's a good point here. All right, Michael. Look, I'm going to end on one uh, good question here. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to like. Um, this is from Kryly36. If you were to have a close encounter with the UFO, what would be the most Michael Ian Black thing you would do in that situation? Um, probably what would happen is, so I'd get on, let's say I'm invited on board, I'm on this UFO, and the aliens like, um, hey, welcome to the UFO. Uh, so happy you're here. <laughs> and then it tells me its name. And I forget the name immediately. And then for the rest of our time in interstellar space, I'm too embarrassed to ask the alien's name. So I'm just like, yeah, man. Yeah, totally. Yeah, brother. No. That's yeah, a cool Jim, nebula. You're just like throwing out names <laughs> to see if they respond. Yeah, Krog. Yeah. That's an amazing yeah, nebula. Yeah. Right? What did you call me? Hmm? Yeah. Huh? What? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Oh, my God. That needs to be a skit, a, a TV show, a movie, something, because that is so funny. Oh we're out God. there for hundreds of thousands of years. <laughs> just drifting along. Yeah. Never knowing. <laughs> Till, till it's still, but then you realize at the end, they they didn't know your name either. They were dealing with the same <laughs> issue, you know, the whole time. And we just have such struggling. a good laugh about it. Oh, we have such yeah. a good laugh. Yeah. Ah, those hundred thousand years we wasted. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, no, what a great answer, man. Oh, that's so funny. Look, Michael, I cannot tell you, man, how much I enjoyed this, dude. I, I, my God, this was so much fun, man. Um, yeah, my pleasure. So, Thanks for having me on. You're so knowledgeable about this too. So it made this a uh, fascinating discussion. Um, uh, and you brought new thoughts, new things I had never have thought about. I know people listening and watching are going to have the same, um, same experience. So again, thank you so much, man, for taking the time. This was, this was amazing. Oh really. yeah. My pleasure is really fun. Uh, thanks for inviting me on.
Hopefully we we'll get to do it again here uh, in the near future or something. If you're interested, that would be I'm cool. around. Hell I yeah. remain on the C list and unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell, you know, do you have anything coming out you want to tell people about? You want to promote no. something, some project? Uh, I don't know. Nah. Well, I mean, if you want to subscribe to my sub stack, that's the thing I've been doing a lot lately. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm working on other stuff too, but. I'll put a link in the description. Have people go check it out for sure, man. You just write yeah. articles on there. What are you doing? Yeah, on just write whatever. I write about UFOs sometimes. I write about all kinds of stuff. Yeah, right on, man. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Michael. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Say hi to your pubs for me, and we'll talk soon, brother. Thanks. My pleasure. All right, man. Thank you, Patrick. Peace. Bye. All right, later. Bye. I live inside my own world of make believe. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach. Cross.